Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a respawn uh, system in your game. Uh, pretty simple. So you can see right here, I just have this little box thing, and basically whenever the player walks to this box, he's going to die. So if I go and I can walk over here, you can see I die, and I ragdoll, and I stay in this ragdoll state for a little bit. And then I pop up and I respawn, you can see there's my dead body over there. And then after a little bit of time, it will disappear. And so you can keep doing that. And this also works for multiplayer. So you can see right now I'm just playing offline. But if I switch it to client, and I'll just spawn with two clients. And I hit play. Drag these guys over. You can see I have my two clients here. And if one of the client goes and dies, you can see it's replicated. So they both see it. And then the new guy spawns. And same with this guy. So he dies when he hits the box. And then he respawns as well. So yeah, that's basically what I'll be showing you how to do. We're going to be doing the single player version of it first, because I know some people probably just don't even care about multiplayer. But um, since it's respawning is such a typical thing that you do in a multiplayer game, I figured I'd show you guys how to do it in a network scenario as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and launch a new instance of Unreal. So I'm going to launch the Epic Game Launcher. And then I'm on version 4.25.1, so recommend trying to be on this one or something close to it and then uh, I'm just gonna hit launch here and while this is going I'm gonna move this guy over to my other screen just so I can have something to reference and then we'll just give this a second to load so like I said we're gonna be doing it in single player first just to get it working and then we're gonna be converting it to multiplayer so we want to select games down here at the bottom and then hit next and then for this I'm just using the third person template so we'll do that and we don't need any starter content. I'm just going to name this project uh, Respawn Tutorial and go ahead and create the project. Give it a second here to load. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create that little kill box so that we have something to kill our player. Uh, I'm just going to delete this little spinny thing as well. So. To do that, we will just come back here to the content directory, right click, make a new blueprint of type actor, and we'll call this bp underscore kill zone. And you don't necessarily have to do this uh, for your game if you don't have kill zones, but a lot of games will have something like this for if you fall off the map, there'll be like a kill zone below, below the map, or if you have like fire or something that you just want to kill the player as soon as they get in it, um, this is what it'd be used for. But this is mostly just a tool to show off the respawn system. So it's just going to be pretty quick and dirty. So let's open this up and then we'll go ahead and just add a little box collision up here. So box collision. And then over here in the emit graph, we just want to say whenever the player overlaps with this box, we want to kill the player. So right click, go to add event and we want the on component begin overlap. So go ahead and override that event. And so when we override with something, or sorry, when we overlap with something, we want to cast to see if it is a player. So we'll cast to our third person character or whatever character you happen to be using in your project. And then we want to essentially just kill this player. Um, so we need to go ahead and write a function inside of the third person character called kill that essentially just kills the player. So let's go to our third person character blueprint. So we'll come back here and we'll go to our third person blueprints and third person character and open this guy up so like I said inside of here we just want to write a little event for killing the player so we'll right click in the event graph and say add custom event and we'll just call it kill so basically when we kill the player we want to have him ragdoll and then we want to have him lay there for a little bit and then we want to have him respawn and then a little bit later we want to have his corpse despawn because you don't want to have just a bunch of corpse laying around so to do that um, we're going to make a little handy function here because we're going to end up calling it from a couple different places later so we'll just make a little function called handle kill and inside of here we want to do the ragdoll stuff. So in order to ragdoll the player, um, you can see he has a capsule component. So we want to disable collision for this capsule component because we don't want to use this anymore. We want to use the collision of his physics body. So we'll drag in our capsule component and we'll say set collision enabled. 
we'll say no collision. And so now that collision is disabled for the capsule component, we want to enable it for the mesh, and we want to enable it in such a way that it will ragdoll. So in order for ragdoll to work, you have to have physics enabled. So if we drag in our mesh, the first thing we want to say is set set simulate physics. So set simulate physics. We want to set this to true so that it will simulate physics. And then the next thing we want to do with the mesh is we want to set the collision profile to ragdoll. So set collision profile name. And we want to set this. I'm just going to double click here to create a little reroute node just to organize it. We want to set this to ragdoll. So just type, oops, oops, what the heck did it do? Just type ragdoll. Make sure you spell ragdoll correctly, otherwise it won't work. And then finally, we want to set the movement mode of the character to none, and that will prevent the character from moving, like jumping or walking, because obviously you don't want the character to be able to walk around or jump or you know shoot or do anything after he's dead. So we'll drag, drag in the character movement component and then drag off of this and say set movement mode, and we want to just leave it here as none. And we'll look that up. All right, so this kind of handles killing our player. Uh, and there's a few more things we want to do outside of this function. So let's go back to the event graph and then drag in that handle kill function that we just wrote so that this happens first. So after we've kind of ragdolled the character, we want to do a couple more things. We want to make it so that the camera is no longer attached to the capsule, because you can see if you go to the viewport, the camera or the camera boom is attached to the capsule component. Um, and we don't really want to do that because we want it to be attached to the actual character, the actual mesh whenever he ragdolls so that the camera will follow wherever the ragdoll um, decides it wants to go. So we'll come back here and we'll say camera boom. And I'm going to disable the collision test on it. So do collision test, set do collision test. And we're going to set this to false. And this is just to avoid um, the camera like overlapping with things you don't want it to while he's ragdolling because the ragdoll kind of goes crazy. It just makes it look a little bit nicer in my opinion. Um, but the main thing we want to do, like I was just saying, is we want to drag in this camera boom again and say attach to component. And make sure you get this one, attach component to component, not attach actor to component. We want to attach component to component. Look that up. And the parent we want to attach to is the mesh, like I just said. And then we want to attach to specifically the pelvis. And the reason for that is because the pelvis is in the middle of the character. So if you go real quick and you just take a look at the skeleton, you can see the pelvis is right here in the center. So you just want to attach to this bone. So this is the one we follow. And then we want to keep the world location of the camera the same whenever we attach it. So make sure you say keep world for all of these. And then the next thing we want to do. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and test this real quick so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, but we actually need to call this event first. So back in the kill zone, let's just drag off of third person character and say kill. And then we'll go ahead and put one of these kill zones into the world. So drag in a kill zone. And then if you want to make it bigger, you can either scale it or you can probably a more proper way is to click on the box over here on the right and then change the box extents. So I'm going to say like 100 uh, for the X, 200 for the Y, and 100 for the Z, just something like that. We'll just put it kind of like right here. So if we go ahead and we run this now, we walk into it, you can see that the character hits the box and he ragdolls, and I can't walk around, I can't jump, I can't do anything. All I can do is kind of move the camera around and look at him. And you'll notice the camera stays with the player, so as the player ragdolls, the camera stays with him, and that's because we're attaching the camera to the mesh. All right, so obviously we want to make it so that he responds. So to do that, um, we're going to go back here to our third person character. And like I had at the beginning, the video at the beginning, we kind of want to wait a few seconds before we actually respawn so that you can kind of see, oh, my player died, and now he's laying there dead. Uh, a lot of games, you know, kind of wait for a second before they respawn you. So to do that, we're just going to add a little delay node. So we'll say delay. 
And then you can put this to view whatever you want. This is essentially, you know, how long the character is going to just lay there with the camera attached to him before you respawn. So I'm just going to make it like three seconds. And then after this, we're actually going to need to go into the game mode and tell the game mode that we want to respawn the player. So for the third person template, there actually already is a game mode defined if you go into the third person blueprint folder. But you can just do this in whatever uh, game mode you currently are using if you if you already have one. So we'll come in here and we'll do third person game mode, open this guy up, and I'll open full blueprint editor for editing. So inside of here, we just want to make a function. So over here on the left, we'll hit function and we'll call this on player killed. So this is gonna get called obviously whenever the player is killed and it's gonna be in charge of taking the player um, and assigning him a new character and then possessing that character. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We want to, first of all, we wanna take in the player that was killed. So click on the on player killed and add a little input event here. And we want the type to be character. So we'll say character. And then this is just gonna be the player. So the first thing we want to do is we wanna get the controller that's controlling this player. So we'll just say get controller. And then we just wanna save that. So right click and promote to local variable. And I'm gonna rename it to controller over here on the left. So we have it as controller. And then we'll hook this up. And then now that we have saved a copy or a reference to the controller, we can go ahead and unpossess the player that we were attached to. So we'll call unpossess. So what this is doing is it's telling the game that we no longer want to possess the character that's dead and lying on the ground because we want to spawn a new character and possess that character. Uh, and if you don't know what possess means, it basically just means to take control of that character. And a, kind of a good analogy for this, I think, is like the game of chess. So in chess, you can think uh, the player is the controller. And so, you know, the actual human playing the game is the controller. And he can possess different pieces. So if he wants to possess the knight, he can possess the knight and then move the knight. And then he can unpossess the knight and move the bishop. So the controller is the human player. And the pieces are the characters. And so the controller can possess different pieces. But you can only possess one piece as a, one piece at a time. So when the player character dies, we want to go and unpossess that piece or that character, and we want to possess the newly spawned piece or the newly spawned character. So this is unpossessing it, and the next thing we need to do is spawn a new character and possess that. And there's actually a handy little function inside of game mode for this. It's called restart player. And if you actually look at the code inside of C++, basically what it does is it spawns a new instance of whatever you have set as your default pawn and then it possesses it um, but if you don't call unpossess then it won't quite work correctly because it thinks you already have one possessed so it's really important you call unpossess here so we'll just go ahead and hook that up and then it wants the new controller so it's saying or not the new controller it wants the you know the controller that you want to change the possession so we want to just drag in our controller like so so again hopefully that, that wasn't too confusing i tried to explain it as best as i can but again just to recap when the player is killed we are grabbing the controller of that player, and then we are telling the controller to unpossess the character that it possesses. So that's unpossessing the dead corpse on the ground, we're saying, hey, we no longer want to control this guy. And then we're calling restart player, which spawns us a new guy, a new character. And then we're saying, go ahead and possess that character instead. And those last two things happen inside of this restart player. So now back in the third person character, we can call our on player killed. So to do that, we need to get the game mode. So we'll right click and say, get game mode. And we need to cast it to our specific type of game mode. So we'll cast it to our third person game mode. And then from here, we'll call our on player killed function that we just wrote. And so let's go ahead and run this now and see what happens. So if we go over here, and we die, and then we wait three seconds. Oh, nothing seemed to happen. Oh, accessing none, trying to read property player. Oh, I messed up. Uh, I forgot to pass the player. So back here in the third person character, I forgot we need to call, or we need to pass in our player. So we'll right click and say get ref to self, 
because of course the player that we're trying to kill is ourself. So we'll pass in ourself and we'll try this again. Come over here, hit our little box, and then we'll wait three seconds. And you can see we pop up as a new player and this guy's dead on the ground. And if I do it again, then you'll see we die, come back here and we're alive again. Um, and then the one final thing we want to do is we want to make it so that these corpses disappear after a while. And the real reason you want to do that is just for performance reasons. You don't want to have a bunch of skeletal meshes laying around on the ground. So to do that, um, again, we'll just add a delay. And then you can put whatever number you want here, but it's basically how long the corpses are going to lay on the ground for. So let's say like five seconds. And then after five seconds, we'll say destroy actor. And the actor we're destroying is ourselves. And in this case, it's just the corpse on the ground. So it's not actually destroying the current player. It's just destroying that corpse that's on the ground. So if we hit play again, should all work now. We go, we ragdoll, we die, and then we respawn. And we can still see our guy on the ground, but after a few more seconds, he should pop away just like that. And so, yeah, that's basically all you need to do to have a very basic respawn system for a single player. And if you want to see how to do it in multiplayer, that's what I'll be doing in part two of this video. And if you're not interested in multiplayer, then feel free to end the video now, uh, leave a like, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in part two. Thanks.